Hey guys, welcome to the 30 paintings in 30 days project. So every day of this month, at least 30 days of this month, we are gonna create a little painting a day and we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna experiment mostly with watercolor and gouache and um, let's get to painting and I will see you at the end. Hey guys, we are here for episode seven of 30 paintings in 30 days. If you're hearing me speak, it's because you're watching this over via Patreon or you've discovered the unlisted video on YouTube. I don't know how you did that, but cool, welcome. <laughs> um, uh, the regular episodes are just speed through videos on YouTube and patrons only generally get the um, uh, instructional videos. So anyway, that being said, we're gonna do our first painting here. I'm gonna, since I tend to be a messy painter, let's see. Oh, and it's a good thing I did that because the book is upside down. <laughs> All right, since I tend to be a messy painter, we're gonna cover these empty spots with some deli paper. Um, these pieces of deli paper are very old um, and well used, but that's okay. They're still serviceable. I'm gonna just put a clip right there. I tend to um, need them to protect the parts I'm not painting on today. I am doing the paintings as little small paintings, and so I've taped off different sections in the book. The painter's tape, this is just general hardware store painter's tape. It works well to give you a nice, most of the time, a nice crisp, crisp edge um, on your paintings, which is another thing that I do frequently. Um, okay, so I've got my inspiration book. Um, filled with photos, mostly ones I took, but sometimes I clip things out of magazines. Um, and then um, associated colors I'm inspired to use by the colors and composition of the photos. Um, I created this uh, last year, I have a number of them, so we're using them as inspiration for these paintings um, this month. And I'm right now on this page, um, but you use whatever you want to for inspiration. I like the sort of muted tones with a little pop of orange It's in that one. We're going to start with our half inch flat. This is a Princeton Neptune half inch flat brush. And I'm going to start with, hmm, I think I'm going to take some neutral tint, which is a dark gray color. I think I'm going to add just a little bit of raw umber to it. and a tiny little bit of buff titanium, which is an off-white color. And you'll get something, since the buff titanium is fairly opaque and not transparent, you'll get something that's a little bit more um, of a gouache, uh, opaque paint, but it's this sort of brownish gray color. And I'm gonna, of course, this is why we have the deli paper, um, at least in part, because you know, Hello, I'm messy. I'm gonna put some on here and then I'm going to add water. Watercolor, of course, is, you know, a simple medium. It's only gonna go where you put the water. It is not gonna go anywhere where you don't put water for it to go. I do a lot of drying between layers, um, which um, I like because I can control how much the paints mix. So that being said, I'm gonna plug in the dryer and we're gonna give this a dry and we'll be right back. Okay, now we're gonna continue. Still staying with the half inch flat. I'm gonna grab a little bit more neutral tint. And just paint a line. I barely touched the brush to the page. I'm gonna go underneath the line and add some water. Let the pigment go where it may. Okay, another dry. 
Okay, before we go any farther, I'm gonna go in with a white gel pen. Ho hopefully, my white gel pen decides to work. You know, I need my reading glasses. I'm like, why can't I see the page? Oh, that would be because I don't have the reading glasses on. So, you know, in my experience, your white gel pens don't always wanna work super well over watercolor. There's just something about writing over the pigments that make them not a very happy camper. But I'm gonna do some um, sketchy lines suggesting a sort of a feather shape here. I'm gonna do what I can with the gel pen. I do have a whiteout pen. scrap of paper. Okay. We're going to let that dry for a minute and we're going to stick with our flat brush and we're going to go in with Indian yellow. I'm going to mix it just a little bit with a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of the Quadocridone magenta, which is a very brightly pigmented color. And that was too much. And that was just a drop, so let's add some more. I just wanted it a little bit more on the orangey side, the Indian yellow. There we go. Okay, so we're going to... Again, I'm just barely touching the paper. Now the inspiration photos that I took are a number of, and I took these photos, there are a number of different pictures of feathers on the ground. Um, some of them have fall foliage um, surrounding the feather, hence the shapes I just put on there. And we're just gonna suggest those shapes. Okay. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. We are going to give this a dry and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got a small, a teeny tiny brush and I've got sort of a medium brush. So this is a, a Skoda number four round and this one is a Princeton Aqua Elite number one round. I think we're going to go with the four initially. I was going to do something different, but I'm going to grab some sepia. I'm gonna just put a little bit of on my plate, which I'm is off camera, I think. I don't think you can see it. I'm mixing it with the orange color I made. Now, of course, that I'm filming, my allergies are acting up. Of course they are. I'm just making suggestive lines. This is supposed to be fairly abstract. I'm not expecting it to. Be something that's realistic. I don't, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I don't really, I don't really do that, so. Okay. I'm gonna take a little bit more straight sepia. I'm just gonna end up being a little bit darker, of course. And then a little bit of the dark gray color that we made without rinsing my brush off. So that means on the brush, it's going to mix with the sepia that's on there. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm just I'm just highlighting my feather. Not highlighting. I'm adding shadows to my feather. I'm adding shadows to my shapes that I have on the page. Blending things just a little bit. Okay, give it another dry. Okay, I think we could use a little bit of a highlight. I'm going to go in there real quick with um, a damp brush to blend like what in one of the older other videos I told y'all to don't use your good watercolor brush this is a sort of a scrubby brush I use on acrylic paints this is FX FX brush number nine by creative mark No, because we're using uh, white out for our highlight color. You could, of course, use acrylic paint. You could use a marker. You could use a gel pen, a paint pen. But just be aware of how fast things dry. So the white out pen dries pretty quickly. So I think that's pretty good. So now let's take our tape off. It's a cute little sort of fall inspired little painting. And what I would do with this painting is I would take that teeny tiny brush and some of the colors that are left on my palette. I would just make that feather extend over the edge like that. Probably grab a little bit of the orange if I can find some on the palette. Yeah, and just add that in. Yep, just like that. There you go. So that's painting number seven version, sorry. Um, if you'd like to support the free content here on Facebook or in the, fa uh, here on Facebook, holy cow. If you'd like to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups, I certainly would appreciate that. You can of course join Patreon. We do have YouTube membership here for a, a small fee. And, um, also I have an Etsy shop and I have, um, PayPal tip jar and all that stuff. So check out the video description. Relevant links will also be down there. And uh, yeah, don't forget the most important things. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Do share your work with me. I would love to see what you're doing. That's it for now. See you later. Bye guys.